Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is another Declaration of Truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlbut. And no, the House of Representatives still does not have a speaker, nor have we seen another Twitter file drop. So I'm going to continue the discussion I began yesterday. Two days ago, as I told you, Elon Musk reminded the world of his primary driving ambition to make the human race multi-planetary. In fact, Musk has long held that as long as human beings existed on more than one planet, no disaster could destroy humanity completely. Nor does it matter to him that humanity would divide itself into two or more separate civilizations. His planning for cities on Mars with no attempt to normalize their gravity shows this. But if the late inventor Robert D. Ensman had had his way, humanity would have spread itself much further and be a little bit along, too. Imagine, if you will, separate civilizations in multiple star systems with a division that recalls the division of humanity on Earth before the development of instant communication and rapid transportation. Someday I'll talk more about what that will be like. Oh, that. Today I'm going to talk more about Robert Ensman and his thoughts on how to get to that point. Before I start, I do want to shout out to the prime sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views. Link in the description. And be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of great merchandise there, especially this t-shirt that I have chosen for today. Now, let me explain what's going on in this picture. A big bird is trying to eat a frog, but the frog is wringing the bird's neck. And the caption? Never give up. One more thing. If you like what you're about to hear, you can like this video. You can also click the bell icon to get a notice every time I come out with a new one. In fact, do you see the new icon, the heart shape with the U.S. dollar sign in it? That's the super thanks icon. If you really want to keep these videos coming, click that and leave me a tip. Any currency will do, so long as it's legal tender. Now, who was Robert Ensman? Robert Duncan Ensman was born in Beijing in 1924. He watched the introduction of the automobile to that city within his lifetime. That experience surely inspired him to believe that technology would never stop advancing. Details of his life and as much of his written articles and notes as have survived are available from the Foundation for the Research of the Ensman Archive. I have left a link to their site in the description. Now, Dr. Ensman, as it turns out, never stopped designing ever more exotic ships, many of which would seem impossibly large. But the concerted opposition that he got from the academic community stunned him. Now, it did not turn him into a misanthrope. Instead, he accused his opponents of misanthropy. Most of his criticisms would echo those by the nationalist populists of today. He never used the phrase deep state, but he would recognize its machinations and the ideologies it, prop it propounds. No, he never imagined, uh, he never anticipated the active encouragement of children to go for surgical mutilation or hormonal poisoning. But he flatly accused the elite of his day of provoking war for no reason other than to achieve mass depopulation. Were he alive today, he would no doubt join SpaceX as director of exotic projects or some such title and SpaceX would have a far more ambitious space program than it now envisions. Today, the word Starship stands for SpaceX concept for a heavy lifting but totally reusable rocket ship. Even its booster stage would return to Earth for cleaning, refueling, and reuse, with occasional refurbishing. At least Elon Musk understands what no one in the industry even considered before him. Rocket engines are the most expensive part of any rocket ship, and boosters must carry the most powerful such engines in the largest number. One does not idly throw these away. 
Already, SpaceX offers launch services at the lowest price per mass in the industry, precisely from reusing boosters. The SpaceX Starship will make that reusability complete. And now I want to talk about the real Starships that Robert Ensman sketched out. One of these we should have built already. The other is a bit more on the exotic side, and I'm not at all sure we could build one, but you don't know until you try. And it would be a real honey of a ship if we could build it. Before I get into that, I want to shout out to a sponsor who can really help you through the economic storms to come. That sponsor is OurSilverLines.com. Do you feel like you're working harder for your money just to get by? You are not alone. The fluctuating economy, employment issues, and unexpected changes in life have left many families struggling over the past few years. Collecting gold and silver can help shield you against many of these challenges. But if you're like me many years ago, you don't know where or how to start. Our Silver Lines helps by connecting you with thousands of members who are learning the secrets to creating and protecting true wealth by collecting precious metals. Now, whether you just want to collect rare and unique coins or take advantage of the business opportunities this company provides, they can help you learn to live an exceptional life. Visit OurSilverLines.com to learn how you can build a legacy for your future. And now, let's talk about real starships the kind that fly interstellar missions. In 1949, while still a student, Robert Ensman sketched out his first starship design, the development and deployment of the atomic and hydrogen bombs gave him the idea. Why not detonate such bombs repeatedly, confine their blasts, and then use, use them for propulsion? In fact, Project Orion, still, still active then, had its basis in that same principle. But an Orion ship was supposed to have only one such engine. Ensman proposed a ring or a cluster of seven or eight such engines. In his design, which like everything else you can see at the Ensman Archive site, he placed a snowball of frozen molecular deuterium, that's heavy hydrogen, a thousand feet in diameter, forward. In later concepts placed the ship's command country, uh, control country forward of this. Immediately aft of that tank, he placed three cylindrical modules, each 300 feet in length and diameter, along the long axis of the ship. A 100-foot engineering module with the attached engine array would complete the ship. Well, it's too bad. NASA canceled Project Orion in 1960. Ensman wrote, that the managers gave orders to cut up all prototypes into scrap metal and end all discussion. But Ensma never stopped thinking about his concept. In 1964, he would flesh out his design for a nuclear pulse ship for publication. Nine years later, Mr. G. Harry Stein used that design for the basis of a program for starflight that he published in Ben Bova's magazine, Analog. More recently, Ensman scrapped his nuclear pulse design. No, he didn't tear the notes off, they're still there, but he came up with another radically different design. This he based not on any chemical burn or fusion explosions, but on a particle beam. He reasoned that at extreme relativistic speeds, the mass of the particles in such a beam increases many fold and significantly. A ship deploying that kind of engine could achieve truly fantastic speeds and stretch time on board. This ship would be much larger, 2,600 feet long, but 750 feet wide for the snowball fuel tank, 300 feet, uh, feet in diameter for the main body of the ship. And as before, the tank would be forward of the habitation country with the control country in the bow. This design is also more efficient because it uses a fission and fusion reactor to power the particle beam instead of trying to set off explosions. Breaking would be a different matter, 
Ensman conceived of an energy to momentum conversion device which he called a gyrane. This functions only as a brake, but it can brake a ship even from relativistic speed and just as easy as you please. Ensman named this design the Torch class from its appearance. The different specifications show why Ensman came to favor this design, and here they are. Maximum cruising speed for the nuclear pulse or Orion-derived ship, 30% of the speed of flight. For the torch, 98%. As far as I can tell from reading his archive, Enspan never conceived of traveling faster than light. I suppose Miguel Alcubierre's paper was too fantastic even for his mind. Transit time to, say, the Alpha Centauri double star. 15 years in the Orion-derived ship, 4.6 years in the torch. Perceived transit time is another matter, because remember, when you're in a ship traveling at a, fan, a significant fraction of the speed of light, everything ahead of you and behind you seems to draw closer. So as far as your ship's chronometer and your own body were concerned, you'd get to Alpha Centauri in 13.7 years in the Orion-derived ship, and in the torch, 0.18 years, a little over two months. Seriously. But the biggest thing to wrap your head around is how big a company each ship could carry. The old nuclear pulse ship, 2,000. The torch, 10,000. Which means that the torch, if we could build it, can carry a larger colony contingent much further, even if the journey lasts for generations. But the ship will not actually take off with a full capacity load. Especially in the generation case, the ship will need room to accommodate a larger company. So, you take off in the nuclear pulse ship with, say, a thousand crew and passengers, and 15 years later, maybe your mixed company would double. And, and this ship could handle it. But in the torch, hey, here to Alpha Centauri in a little over two months. I'd say you don't need to worry about an increase in the ship's company. Not unless you're going way out into space and way beyond the Alpha Centauri system. By the way, Dr. Entzmann did not intend to send out either class of ship alone. He planned to send out fleets of ten ships each. Toward the end of his life, he envisioned drive systems able to drive a ship at 99% of the speed of light, and a ship carrying that kind of drive would serve as a scout or an escort. And when I talk about how you decide where to go, believe me, scouts, if you have them, would be a big part of any such program. Entzmann died in 2020, so he could have served as Musk's direct mem mentor. And it's just too bad that he didn't. Let's imagine if he had. Believe me, SpaceX might have proceeded much faster in this development program. Almost certainly SpaceX would not have discarded the second stage of a Falcon uh, 9 or a Falcon Heavy. Entzmann would have told Elon, waste not, want not. Instead, they would have, pre -pro they would have pro -pro programmed each second stage to navigate an orbit to join its fellows. These stages would have formed two clusters, one in low Earth orbit and the other, a smaller one in geostationary Earth orbit. Hey, SpaceX has placed satellites in GEO. Etzman might have speeded up the development of what we now think of as the SpaceX Starship. He would have wanted it soon enough to deploy a space junk cleanup solution. Even if SpaceX had deployed that without asking anyone else to help pay for it, it would have suited Ensman. You would not believe how much junk is up there. In fact, one of these days, a piece of junk is going to smack a satellite and turn it into several pieces of junk, each of which is going to smack another satellite, and then the whole communications network is going to come crashing down and burning up. A Robert Ensman would not have tolerated that. Besides, he would have wanted to start as soon as possible to convert those clusters of Falcon second stages into a viable space station. It would first function as a fuel depot to support missions to the moon and a 
colony expedition to Mars. And given the geopolitical environment, and Esmond would have known all about that, the two men would have made Mars their main base, or at least laid plans to do that. Mars would be the ideal base to mine the asteroids for building materials and mine Jupiter for deuterium. In a generation or two, SpaceX would be ready to take multiplanetary civilization to a new level. Next time I have a day to spare, without resolution of the big pressing issues, I'll talk about that new level. Something to look forward to. Link in the description of the article to the foundation for the research of the Edsmond Archive, to my Declarations of Truth Twitter account, and to Conservative News and Views. I've also left links to the awesome CNAV store and to rsoberlines.com, as I also mentioned. You know already about how to like a video, turn on notifications, and leave a tip. On the end screen, I'm going to leave a subscribe link to my channel and links to a new playlist about space, maybe that evolution of SpaceX Starship again, and a video by another influencer, Jordan Wright, also known as the Angry Astronaut, in which he discusses Ensman's nuclear pulse ship in greater detail. This is Terry A. Hobart delivering another declaration of truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.